Hi everybody, um, I just want to do a quick review of what's been going on in the stock market this past week. <clears throat> so, uh, this is Friday, this is Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday, and then this is last week, so last Friday. So, um, <clears throat> essentially last week was a pretty much a down week, um, and that got me pretty concerned uh, what was going to happen. So, by Wednesday when I saw this crash, I was pretty concerned, um, and then I knew what was going to happen overnight. I knew it was going to kind of stabilize uh, like it did overnight here, and then Thursday was a huge up around 8.30 in the morning with CPI numbers um, being released, uh, things looking pretty positive. So if you draw a line here, you can kind of see what happened. So it was basically excluding what happened here on Wednesday, uh, it almost bypassed everything. Um, so you could bring this line down a little bit, um, maybe a little bit above what we thought was going to happen. But um, it looked like essentially ever since last Friday, um, things were looking pretty good, um, which was kind of a surprise uh, overall for me. And one of the main reasons I wanted to cover this event was because it's basically been the biggest one day event uh, in the last month or more. So today was a huge, um, well, really yesterday, Thursday, was a huge um, increase in the market. Um, that all happened within a matter of minutes, um, which was pretty surprising. Uh, when you look at the chart, uh, minute chart here, you can kind of start to see uh, what happened on Thursday. So that was just, this is a minute chart, and you can see just in a couple of minutes, the market flew up about two and a half percent. Um, and that was all before the market opens. Um, that was around eight, you can see here, uh, it's like 8.30 on the dot. Um, and then actually the interesting thing happened is that around 9.30, the market started to drop again, um, right on the open. So that was pretty, uh, kind of a confusing uh, moment. So you can see on the stock graph here that um, pretty much a lot of the stocks went up about 10% last week, or this past week, um, and you can see a number on Alphabet even going a little bit more than uh, 10%. So you can see here, um, Google up 11%, Microsoft up 11%, Apple up 8%. Um, only the real down ones were Disney and Tesla, and then a number of these healthcare companies. So it's possible uh, that we hit the bottom uh, right back here in the middle of October. Um, that's one scenario, and if you believe that, which the market is kind of suggesting that right now, is saying that this is the curve that we're seeing, so this big U-shaped turnaround uh, basically shows October 11th is kind of 11th or 12th um, being the low point. So to make predictions um, from here on, we pretty much need to look at the daily chart. Um, we're looking at the 60-minute chart, and we're actually looking at the SPY now. <coughs> So one of the interesting things we see is kind of a channel <coughs> heading down here, and you see we're not quite at the top of this channel yet, um, and we haven't even hit the bottom of the channel yet either. So um, it may be that we could make it quite a bit above since we didn't hit this bottom channel. We could kind of extrapolate that out to here, um, which is a possibility. Um, that would be um, to measure that move um, we're talking about a 10% move, 11%, 12% move up, um, possibly. Another interesting observation here is on the force index. Now you can see that ever since coronavirus, things kind of calmed down. Um, as we were heading up, uh, there was kind of a couple splashes here on the downward side and upward side. So basically what's been happening is that we've been having some pretty serious downtrends and then followed by some pretty serious uptrends. And you can see that this was all downtrend <coughs> primarily here and then the force was kind of swaying back to the positive side. Another interesting thing we can do <coughs> on the force graph is draw a horizontal line <coughs> at the peak for today. And you can see that Today's move was very significant. <clears throat> and in fact, the only other big significant moves were right after coronavirus. You see one big significant move in here, um, and then a couple back in COVID land. So this was a very big positive day. It was, you know, by some measure, 7% um, upwards. <clears throat> 
So one of the problems is if you draw another line about the same level, um, you'll see that basically all of these moves on the downward side were bigger by quite a bit, <clears throat> almost twice as bad. So basically these downward moves that we had were very severe. Um, and this is a very significant upward move, but will we see another upward move of the size of these downward moves is the basic question. So a couple of interesting comments on the money flow as we've been going down here. You can see that uh, this peak here actually had a little bit higher money flow than the last peak. <clears throat> now, meanwhile, we are significantly below both peaks right now. <clears throat> So this suggests some interesting result here. Um, one possibility is that, and the other possibility is that. So we're kind of halfway in between both of them, maybe a little bit closer to the lower possibility. <laughs> so it's possible we could turn around any day from now. So to look at the volume, we kind of have to switch to the weekly chart here. Um, and you can see we're kind of actually getting to a little bit more volume than we have seen in the past here um, and a lot of that is actually positive volume which is great so it looks like we are kind of curving down a little bit here using this red candle um, so we are still in positive territory but we are kind of slowing down a little bit now when you compare the volume of the traded stocks you can see we're at basically at 133 versus 116 so there's still a ways to go up into about this level so we're almost there um, and that's a good sign that this is the first time um, that the volume has reached above this kind of level here uh, resistance. So I've been looking at this MACD for a little while, and um, it's quite a bit different than the daily MACD. This is actually a weekly. So you can see that we should be at the end of the November before we see a positive sign that is definitely positive, right? And Back here, um, July, August, we saw a little bit of a sign that things would be positive, and then it curved back down. So we basically just hit this top level here and then bounced off of that. And this looks like we'll probably go a little bit beyond the top level here. Um, it just looks like we could from this chart um, now if you do the daily chart it kind of looks totally different so you see that we're already well above the positive line here um, and these other positive lines were quite good so I almost trust the weekly chart here because we're kind of still in pretty much a downward trend um, and it just helps us understand the context of everything right so we can see that after COVID uh, we were pretty much in a positive trend right around here, right? Um, that was the sixth month, I believe. Um, and then we kind of stayed positive. And you can start to see it curving around a little bit um, right until around here. And then we start to be negative. Pretty, pretty solid negative downturn knowing here. So it really should be that the weekly chart should be correct. It's harder to read this daily chart. Uh, I can try to make some sense of it. Uh, let me look at it carefully and then get back to you. So the first thing I do is create a horizontals here and chart it positive around there. And then looking at these, these look like negative around that range. So you can see that it's about five and five. So it is about even on either side of this. Uh, but, uh, you know, these, these peaks here really were pretty significant. So you have one, two, three, four peaks here where you only have two peaks kind of coming up. So we're basically entering that third peak area where right at the end of this month is pretty important for us to keep going positive until the end of November. So really on a daily chart, um, it's only been until the end of October that we saw this kind of positive move. And then even then it was only for a few days and then it dropped. Oh, sorry, I had a sneeze there, but uh, basically you can see that that was a span of about a week, uh, seven days or so. So 
five days. But and then you can see right after that there was a whole downtrend, uh, and then it's only been in the last couple of days that we saw uh, this new uptrend uh, that's competing against this. So this uh, doesn't look good at all. This down, this down, and then up uh, kind of worries me. So I want to hopefully come back to this MACD and look at some other indicators first because it is quite complicated to see what's going on here. It's almost as if this peak here gives us, it gives us a new uh, kind of channel down. Um, so if we draw the line here, you see what I'm talking about. So that looks like it's going to instantly be busted next week. So if we do see a downward trend right away, then we know that this is going to be a channel um, head down. So depending on what happens on the next week, we can see it kind of curve around here or you know whether or not it goes straight up from there is kind of a debate. So I sometimes really like looking at the volatility charts. Um, you can see the average to range. So this kind of tells me that the volatility is increasing. You can see it's been increasing um, for the most part. Um, when you do the weekly chart, you can see it's definitely been increasing. Um, and that's kind of started back near the peak, actually. So it's quite interesting to see um, the volatility start to rise and then the price start to go down. So <clears throat> it's a really big question about where, what kind of volatility should we see and uh, how much of that, what, what the volatility should be per week. So let's try to estimate what that volatility might be. Um, you can do that kind of with a horizontal line. So you can see there's definitely a low line down here. And we're kind of at a peak right now. So <clears throat> certainly um, the kind of volatility we're seeing is almost like COVID land. So that's pretty hard to imagine that that being a realistic level of change every day um, or every week. So uh, I would say we need to see the volatility down in this range. Um, and it does look like we kind of have maybe hit a peak in this volatility. So we went up here again, we dropped, we went up again, and we kind of dropped again. So we could see some decrease in that volatility um, with maybe a slow increase or a slow drop. So definitely uh, in recent weeks, uh, the volume, as you can see on the chart, has increased. But you can definitely see on this chart um, that the volume for sure has increased over these past weeks and it kind of got a low here um, around uh, 815 and then you can see it peaked here so in October so basically it is still pretty high so it hasn't really dropped down and this is all good trading uh, because the volume is pretty high um, so this is a good time uh, to be trading um, relative to some of these other periods. Um, but it is just high in general. So you can see back in coronavirus land, the volume was extremely high. Um, so we're not, although the <clears throat> volatility, the price volatility is high, the volume um, is still pretty low. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see uh, the difference uh, between volatility in the price and just volatility in the volume itself. So I wanna kinda of close up shop here on the discussion um, looking at the money flow. So I think this is pretty good and definitive here to see. You can see a large upflow in money, a downflow, and then another upflow again. So I think we're basically in an increasing market right now. Um, we kind of, uh, you know, at least according to COVID land, we've had a pretty significant low and the zero line here uh, is right around in here. So we're actually going to cross that pretty soon and then be in positive territory um, for the money flow in general. So that could happen and this week, probably is for sure will happen. So uh, and then we might see, uh, you know, it looks like we could at least see uh, up into here. So into the end of November looks pretty good, actually, um, surprisingly. So. We could see uh, kind of a surprising uh, high uh, up into this range. So that right there, if I measure that move, um, which I don't really believe in this move, um, but it's about a 10% move. So I think um, 
you can see on these charts basically approximately where that would be. So anyway, I still think there's some room for on the downside here too. Um, if we miss this line and don't break it, um, it could be pretty disastrous. So certainly um, we're already almost at that line. Um, whether we go down farther uh, into December, um, I mean, it, we just don't know right now. So, you know, we have Facebook layoffs, we have a bunch of CPI numbers coming in, a bunch of things. Um, and the fact that we missed it here is a very good sign because I thought we were gonna go lower. Um, we ended up going higher in that week. So, uh, you know, staying optimistic is probably the right way to do this. Um, and, you know, but in saying that, you know, we could make it up, you know, another 10%. Now, the downside of the 10% really brings us that these lows were a little bit too low um, and then brings this whole line kind of in like that. Um, so I don't know if that's going to be the case. It may be the case. If we drop lower again, we can probably start to bring up this line. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the study. Let me know what kind of ideas you got, uh, thoughts, suggestions. Uh, be glad to hear your advice and we can try to talk it over. Thank you so much.